last night I talked to you, just, you don't have to disturb them, they'll, they'll be fine in a while. Uh, last night I talked to you about the double portion, and I talked to you about how after Elijah was taken away, he rent his old garment, and his old garment spoke of his old position as the one who washed the hands of Elijah. And he rent it, and it was not, even though people have tried to convey that it was a symbol of his grieving, it was not a symbol of his grieving because if he would have been renting his garments as a symbol of grief, he would not have picked up a new garment and wrapped himself in it. That was contradictory to the custom. And uh, bring him back to me. Bring him back to me. See, because there, there's, a, there's a hamburger chain uh, called in and out and they have a burger, and they call it a double-double. That's what you just got was a double-double. Somebody give God a praise. I'm just... Sometimes you just got to permanently mess people up. You just got to permanently do some brain damage because he's getting a new mind. This mind which is in Christ is going into him. Uh, James, come up here with your wife. I know I'm in the middle of my preamble, but I just, uh, do you know those, uh, that, that other guy? Uh, there's a big guy sitting next. That's your son. And who's that guy next to him? It's your brother-in-law. And who are those people next to them? Okay, and what about the three women on the end? Do you know them? You know them. They're not family. Do they go to your church? Their church, right? Well, just come on down here, all of you. I just want to, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, uh, I just need to come down here. There's too many of you. I'll get a backache if I keep Keep going. Praise God. How you doing? Everything all right? Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I, double. Double. I ain't messing with you. You're too big. Double. God's getting ready to release some new things in your church, in your ministry. But you're getting ready to bust loose, James. And, and I, I don't know how to describe it any other way but that. But you're getting ready to bust loose. You're getting ready to rent an old garment and pick up a new garment. Nothing wrong with who you were. But God has something greater for who you are becoming. And I, and I know I'm barking it out there over everybody. But I want you to hear me that in your church in Virginia, the word needs to be double. And you need to just start looking at it and say, all right, double the anointing, double the people, and double the resources. And we're, we're in January still. It's not like we're in November and we're starting to declare this. I, I'm, you got a whole year to see God send something into the midst of your church that is absolutely going to draw people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Don't be boxed in by who you were. Be released by who God says you are. Is everybody still okay? All right. I'm trying to not do this. I'm trying to, to get on preach, and I may not get there. But I, I see fresh oil on you. I see a garment of the double portion. I see you putting on your strength. I see you clothing yourself in the garments of praise, not the spirit of heaviness. And it was just like, even though it was Naomi and Ruth, she tells Ruth, put on your best garments. When, when the, the prodigal's father saw him, he said, bring the best robe. Bring the robe that's in agreement with who he is. And the Lord's getting ready to put a robe on you that's in agreement with who you are. And I'm seeing you draped in a purple robe. 
I've seen you draped in a robe that has authority. I've seen you draped in a robe that speaks of a higher anointing, a higher level, a higher rank. And God said, when you return home and step into your pulpit in this coming month of February, there's going to be fresh oil on you and there's going to be fresh revelation on you. Now, I don't know. Now, who is he? Your brother-in-law. So that means that's your sister? I guess that's how that works, isn't it? You're the brother-in-law because that her is related to her? All right. Something's on you. And, and you're, you're a good old boy. But I want you to understand something. You're getting ready to become an anointed man of God. And the people, there, there's a, you're a man's man. But the thing is about you, God said this man that you were had a hardness about him, had a almost, well, a harshness about him, almost like a, an angry spirit. But God said, I have broke that thing. And now I'm getting ready to bring forth new fruit. And you are going to become an evangelist. And you're going to bring people into the house from the north, the south, the east, and the west. My God, there's something. God's going to use this man. And there was a day that sometimes you could create trouble. But you are going to be a trouble creator for darkness now. You're going to pierce the darkness. You are going to rise up against the powers of the enemy. And yokes are going to begin to be destroyed. You're going to lay your hands on men and yokes are going to break off of them. You're going to look at them and see how you used to be. And tell them you can be a new creation. And old things can pass away and old things become new. Now this woman has prayed for you and stood in the gap and made up the hedge and interceded for you. But I'm going to tell both of you something. The spirit of the double, which has to do with total restoration, is coming into your home. It's coming into your finances. It's coming into your personal relationship. It's coming into everything about you. And you're not going to walk out of here, sir, like you came in. Give me some oil. Uh, if you could bring me some oil. Lord, this ought to roll down the river here. We have nothing to obstruct it. Uh, I anoint you. I anoint your head with fresh oil and I declare it Jesus name uh, glory to God I anoint you uh, with fresh oil James uh, I anoint you uh, with fresh oil and you will not preach like you have preached uh, you will not prophesy like you have in the past you will not minister like you have in the past you're putting on a new robe a new garment he's anointed your head with oil and your cup is running over fresh oil fresh fire fresh Fresh oil, fresh fire, fresh oil, fresh fire, fresh oil, fresh fire. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, girl. Right now, in the name of just get ready, man. Fresh oil is coming upon you, son. Fresh oil. Are you ready? Throw your hands up in the air like you're kind of a charismatic fanatic. Receive it in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Somebody praise it. Somebody praise him. Double. 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 Double anointed. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bring, bring, bring Bubba back to me here. <laughs> What's his name? Stacy. Stacy. Come here. Double. <laughs> say, 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 why do you do stuff like that? Well, remember, Jesus touched a man twice. 
laid his hands on the blind man. First time he touched him, he said, I see men like trees. Then he touched him again. And he said, I see clearly. See, some of you kind of get the first touch, but you haven't, you haven't let it ferment quite enough. And then you get the second touch, and things start becoming clear. And then for some of you, you got to get a double-double because God's getting ready to talk to you in such a way that you go, but, but what's her name? Angel? Come here, angel. Because God said double. <laughs> Somebody praise him. Sometimes God just got to keep doing what he needs to do. See, don't, don't start bucking the flow. Because when the water was coming out of the temple, James, he was moving in a certain direction. And God wasn't changing the direction. He's just saying, if you're going to get in over your head, you're going to have to move with how it's flowing. And when he looked back, he saw trees with fruit that were bearing fruit every month of the year. You're going to have your February harvest, your March harvest, your April harvest, your May harvest, your June, your July, your August, your September, your November, your December harvest. You're getting ready to see a crop every month of the year, river of life. You're getting ready to see a February harvest. You're getting ready to see a March harvest. You're getting ready to see an April harvest. You're getting ready to see a May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December harvest. You're getting ready to see a harvest every month. The fruit is coming. The leaves are coming. The miracles are coming. The answers are coming. The resources are coming. It's a new season. And somebody needs to shout. <laughs> so back what I was saying before I called you all up here. You go sit down now so I can finish up a couple of... How you doing, Stacey? Come here. Come here, Stacey. Come here. Come here, Stacey. Oh, I messed your shirt up. I don't feel bad. Double. Double. Oh, God, get him so drunk in the Holy Ghost he doesn't know his name's Stacy. Glory to God. Now, when he, praise God. See, when he saw Elijah go, he rent his garment but he instantaneously picked up the mantle of Elijah. And see, some of you are going to have to rent the garment that identifies you with who you were and pick up the garment that prophesies of who you are becoming. And some people are afraid to pick up their mantle of destiny because they are so comfortable with whom they were. Some people don't want promotion. Listen to me. Because to whom much is given, much is required. And some people almost intentionally sabotage themselves to keep themselves at a particular level because they're afraid of the next level. You sure you're ready to get up there, Stacy? Because I'm ready for you. Come on, Stacy, get up, get up. Get him on up. Get him on. Bring him over here. Because, because, uh, because, because see, I, I'm sorry. You just needed a double-double. That's all. That's what you needed. Uh, and bring Angel over here. Bring Angel over here. Because God's just, uh, God's just doing something in you, Angel. And the Lord is just healing up some old wounds and healing up some old scars and raising you up for a new day day and causing you to forget about some stuff that has buffeted you since you were a young lady. And the Lord said, the double is on you. Somebody praise God. So see, see, he rent, he rent the garment and he picked up the garment of the double portion, but some people are afraid to pick up the garment, the new garment, because now they got to step into something that they've never had to do before or be before. That's why he said to him, Elijah said to Elijah, you've asked a hard thing. It wasn't a hard thing to give him a, 
uh, a, a, a transference of anointing. He's saying what you're getting ready to step into is a hard thing. And some of God's people don't want to take on the hard things that they're going to have to step into at the next level of spiritual authority. Because it's one thing to sit out there in the pews and cast your opinions on everything. And it's another thing to be on the front lines and start ministering to people and start speaking and start teaching and start moving in the So It's a whole nother thing. You might say, instead of going to an art gallery and casting your opinions on everybody's art to get on to uh, with a, an easel in front of you and start painting yourself. Some of you getting ready to pick up a brush and start painting and some of you are going to find out what it is to be criticized. And you're going to find out what it is for people to find fault with you. But you're going to rise up and say, I would rather have somebody find fault with me than to sit back and do nothing. God needs more than spectators. My granddaughter Brooklyn is eight years old and she's playing basketball. And in fact, she's pretty good at it. And so... Uh, Gayla's a real foo-foo girl. You know, Gayla doesn't equate to female athletes so much. You know, when she sees a girl, she thinks of cheerleaders and, you know, dances and pom-poms and all that cute stuff. And so after one of the games, Gayla walked up to Brooklyn and said, Brooklyn, you did such an incredible job. And said, you know, as you get older, you're going to be a cheerleader. She looked at her grandma and she said, I don't want to be a cheerleader. I want to be a player. And man, I thought, now that'll preach. Because some of you are getting ready to stop being cheerleaders, and you're going to start being players. Some of you are going to do more than say, rah, rah, Pastor Chris. Give me a C. Give me an H. Give me an R-I-S. Chris, 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 Chris. Give me a P, give me an A, give me an S, T, O, R, pastor, 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 pastor. No, you're going to start rising up and say, I'm in this game. I'm putting my feet on the neck of demons and devils and unclean spirits. But see, to do that, you've got to rip the old garment. Excuse me, you've got to get rid of the pom-poms and you've got to start picking up a sword. You've got to get rid of the cheerleading mindset and step into a warrior's mentality. You've just got to quit thinking about it and you've got to start doing it. And there's a whole generation being raised up at River of Life that are not just going to shout amen. They're going to move mountains, heal the sick, cast out devils, pray for entrepreneurs, pray for men, pray for women, pray for teenagers, pray for children to be what God has called them to be. Mm. So he wrapped him up in the double. He wrapped him up. You're safe, Stacy. Don't worry about it. I can't go past the double-double. See, he wrapped him up in the double. God wrapped him up in the double. And God's, when in the book of Zechariah, in the ninth chapter, it said, what chapter? 9.12, it said, turn you to the stronghold or to the fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. And that terminology, render double unto thee, meant total restoration. I don't care what it is the enemy stolen from you. God wants to bring total restoration. Second chapter, Joel said, I will restore the years. And some of you just let stuff go and say, let it go, let it go. Well, I'm not Elsa, baby. I'm not letting nothing go. If the devil stole it, I'm going to get it back seven times. I'm going to get David recovered it all. But in the nature of how God works, he didn't just recover it all. He got what was called David's spoil. And it was so much that he went and he blessed all the elders of Judah. He had a big spoil. 
That's where the Bible talks about the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. You're going to get it all back, but you're not just going to get it all back. You're going to get your spoil. Oh my God, you're going to get Jim Pope's spoil. You're going to get Chris Phillips' spoil. You're going to get James's slash Caleb's spoil. You're going to get Maurice slash David's spoil. Are you following me? And he said, return to the fortress. Some of you got to understand the most important place in your world right now is this fortress because you're a prisoner of prophetic hope. I brought it out last night. The only thing that has kept your pastor and his wife planted in Jacksonville is they were both prisoners of a hope, prisoners of a prophetic vision that when everything was going against them, they said, we know what God has said. They wouldn't leave the fortress. They wouldn't leave the place of Holy Ghost safety. And then God said, now I'm getting ready to render double. How much was it that you needed to buy the land when I was here at the, at the cathedral of the Mai Tai? 160,000. But how much did you need from that meeting when we sat out and talked? Was it 30 or 40 or $60,000 more to pay it off? And so I, I sat down with Pastor Phillips after I think it was my second time here. And I said, what's stopping you from building the other property that you guys just left. And he said, well, we need, we need to pay off the land. I said, well, how much is it going to be to pay off the land? I thought it might be three, four $400,000. He said, 60000 I remember, it was, I think we're at Applebee's. And we sat out at Applebee's. I said, all right, I just want you to listen to me. I believe if you do this, God will give it to you. And I've talked to a lot of pastors, and, you know, it's kind of in one ear and out the other, but not with your man of God. He listened, and I think it was that Sunday, or within a week, he went out there, and he did what God told him to do. He challenged the people, and everything that was needed to pay off that land was released, and you begin to build the new property. You say, well, that's a marvelous testimony, 60,000. You know, when I talk to him today, he doesn't talk about 60,000. I don't know if anybody knows how much this screen cost. Is that a is that kind of an executive committee knowledge? Or? Okay. <laughs> so now, <laughs> how much will it take to pay to get that building started over there on the other Gum Branch property? Oh, uh, it's gonna take sixty thousand. It's gonna take sixty thousand. And it's kind of like I could see the sweat beating up on his forehead when he said it. And now, this, this, was more than the payoff on the old land. <laughs> Stay with me. And when I, when I talk to Mr. Pastor Rockefeller over here, he's not talking in the realms of 5,000, 10,000. He's talking about, well, the, the a million, two million, three million. Uh, the building costs this many million, million, million. And, I, and I'm scratching my head and I say, I remember to Chris Phillips uh, over at the Mai Tai Cathedral of, of, of whatever, uh, River of Life next to the Mai Tai Lounge. And I remember that Chris Phillips. But see, that Chris Phillips is the same Chris Phillips that I first met 25 years ago. The Chris Phillips of today is looking and saying, if I'm big enough to dream it, God's big enough to provide it. Uh, And you know what's getting ready to happen? God's getting ready to pour fresh oil on you. And the old you is getting ready to be buried. And the new you is getting ready to rise up. And instead of looking at things like, oh, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. You're going to rise up and begin to say, my God, God is speaking to me. God is declaring things to me. And if God's given it to me, then God can do it. Some of you are right there. It's almost like you're bent over. The man. Give me one of these things. Give me, give me one of these things. Come quickly. I'm older than I used to be. I don't want to die before you get here. And so, 
And some of you are like right here. You're right here. But you know down deep, if I pick this thing up, if I pick this thing up, I have picked up something that is going to be a hard thing. I picked up something to whom much is given, much is required. But there ought to be enough hunger to be all that God has called you to be, to reach down and say, no matter what the battle is, no matter what the pressure is, I am happier with that which is a hard thing than I am to settle it into who I was. And he went and he said, where is the Lord God of Asha? And they looked at him and they said, the spirit of the prophet doth rest on him. The spirit of Elijah is on him. But his last words from Elijah, you ask a hard thing. Excuse my French. Do you have the guts to pick up your mantle? Do you have the courage to pick up your destiny? God didn't keep you in this church. Walk from a storefront to a nice facility to a city impacting facility for everything to be the same. He said, do you want that which is a hard thing? David said these words in the 92nd Psalm. Thou anoints my head with fresh oil. You anoint my head with fresh oil. But before he says that, he said, my horn shall be exalted like the wild ox, which is one of the most powerful animals in the field. You're putting on your strength. People aren't going to look at you and say, (laughs) they're going to say, whoa. I'm exalted. I'm lifting you up. Chris Phillips, he's exalting your horn like the wild ox. Miriam, he's exalting your horn like the wild ox. And he's anointing your heads with fresh oil. Is anybody in this house ready for something fresh? and something new. If you are, give God one more shout of victory. No, 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 I said, is anybody in this house ready for something fresh and something new? Double, are you ready? For a new mantle? Are you ready to put on your strength? Uh, are you ready to be anointed with fresh oil? If you are, stand to your feet and I want you to give God the warrior praise that He is worthy of. Hallelujah! Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Your cup's never going to run over till your head gets anointed because till you get your thinking in the right place, you'll never walk in an overflow. It was talking about when they were eating the manna. It said they, they begin to eat it and they said it smelled like fresh oil. And this word fresh oil out of Psalm 92, don't worry, I'm not going to preach again. I'm just giving you some highlight reels now. It was called also green oil. It had a fragrance, and it was oil of the highest value. And they also used it for the preparation of very rich uh, food, food that was reserved for celebrations. And when I, I, I preach the whole sermon to my church, I'm sorry, you're just getting the highlights. But see, what you don't get sometimes is you're eating meat that has been sautéed in fresh oil. 
you know, have you ever noticed, thank God for freezers, would you ever notice when you go to the store and you get the meat and you bring it home and you cook it, it just tastes better than when it's been froze for three months? Well, but... But in the same sense, have you ever noticed that when you sit under a man of God that walks with fresh oil, that the meat that's being served just tastes better? It just gives you more strength. It just gives you the feeling you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. See, we got enough people that all they do is throw a little salt and pepper and ketchup on everything. God wants you to get something that's been sautéed in fresh oil. It's going to have a fragrance. It's going to have an aroma. It's going to have a beauty on it. When they created the priestly anointing oil, they used four spices. Two of them were bitter and two of them were sweet. You better get ready for something. There's going to be some bitterness with the anointing and there'll be some sweetness. It's not all going to be sweet, but I'd rather walk with some bitterness and some battles than to have no oil at all. I would rather walk with some trials and some tribulations than to have no anointing at all. Because if I have the anointed, it will remove the burden and it will destroy the yoke. I don't know about you, but I think it's just about time to get some fresh oil on you.